Howdy ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we have a 2011 Nissan Murano, and I'm going to show you how to replace lower control arms. So stay tuned. Okay, first of all, I want to show you our new parts here. Okay, we got Moog uh, suspension parts here, which I feel like is probably one of the best uh, parts in the aftermarket world. And we have a new control arm for the left side and the right side. Okay, I believe this one here is the left, this one here is the right. And the problem with this car was this back bushing on both sides. And I'll show you, I've already taken one of them off here. And I'll take you through the process of doing one side from start to finish. But um, this one here, as you can see, there's a split on this side. There's a split on this side. I have seen a lot worse, but uh, we have pointed this out to the customer in the past. And it's actually getting worse every time I've worked on her vehicle. And we've come to a point where we're going to go ahead and replace it before it gets too bad. Because I have seen cars before, guys, when this back bushing wears out, a lot of these front wheel drive cars that have this kind of design, they will get a lot of play in them. And the tire, bring the camera back up here. What happens is the tires actually, when you accelerate, I, th I can't remember if it goes, the tires move this way or they move that way. But you're, we're talking, if you've got this bushing wore completely out, you cannot keep that car in line you will chew up tires and it also creates a safety issue as well if it gets too bad so we're going to get these replaced today before this becomes a great issue and i'm going to show you how to do one side so stay tuned all right guys we just finished up doing the uh control arm on the driver's side we're getting ready to do the one on the right side here and i actually learned a few things i've done these before in the past when i worked in shops and had them up on a lift and I could pretty much just pull the two bolts on the uh, control arm where it bolts to the frame and pop the ball joint, slip the old one out, slip the new one in. That's not the case when you're doing it here on the ground. So um, I'm going to show you all exactly what you need to do. So pay careful attention. There's a couple really key things that you're gonna take loose here. I'm gonna start with, wanna bring the camera down here? I got my camera person here as my daughter today and she will tell you that it was not too fun on the other side, was it? Until I figured out. You heard your daddy say some bad words, didn't you? It was funny. <laughs> all right, first of all, guys, we're going to go and pull the brakes back apart, okay? I'm going to pull the caliper off, lay it on top of the bucket, pull the rotor out of the way. So there's no need to really watch that. I'm going to go ahead and knock it out, and then we'll proceed on from there. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this caliper on up here again. Really about as high as I can possibly get it. All right guys, I'm getting ready to take apart this, uh, this bolt right here. This is the upper sway bar link bolt. Very important thing to do. This right here is going to be the lifesaver. Make sure you take that nut off of there and pop that sway bar uh, down, okay? You, you can just lay it out of the way. We're also getting ready to uh, take a 10 millimeter and we're gonna pull our ABS wire out of the knuckle, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do those two items and make sure you do them, especially this bolt up here. That's gonna be a life saver, okay? It's gonna make this job so much easier, believe me. All right, guys, next we're gonna go ahead and pull this lower bolt out that um, holds the lower ball joint in place. 18 millimeter socket on this side and hold it with a wrench on the other or vice versa. So we're gonna go ahead and zip that out and pull that bolt out of there okay just that easy right there i'll show you what i'm talking about it holds holds the uh holds it in with a uh it's got a notch in the bottom of the uh ball joint and that bolt actually just goes in there and lock it in place so we'll just lay this aside so we're going to go ahead and remove the two bolts that hold the strut to the knuckle okay so we have a nut on this side we're going to put a 21 on there and we're going to hold the other side with a wrench and we're going to back both of these out there's one okay guys we're going to tap these bolts out of here sometimes you can do them by hand there's one there's the other one I'm going to have to give him a little love tap. Now you just wiggle the knuckle around and get it to wiggle out. There we go. 
So now let me grab the other one. We'll keep these separated. We'll lay these up top. Okay, so now we got the knuckle free from the strut. Okay, let's separate that like so. And it doesn't matter if we can lift this off right now. That's great. If not, we can wait. All right, now I'm getting ready to take the bolt out that goes through the uh, lower control arm in the frame on this, on the back side. And then there's one right up here. You can't really see it, but it's in this general area here. Both of them are, have 21 millimeter heads on them. So you'll need your 21 millimeter socket and a wrench to put them on here and back them out. Okay, so there we go. We got that nut. Let's go and lay it out of the way. Let me back the other one out. This side has the power steering line in the way. There we go. So there we go. We have both of the bolts loose now. I know my head's probably in the way. And this one here pulled out easy, the front one. It's shorter than the one on the back. And let me see if I can get my hammer or something to uh, hold this one. There we go, we got the back one out as well. As you notice, it's a little bit longer. Okay, Okay. now it's time to just take the pry bar and try to pry this thing out of here. Let's see if we can just put it right in here and get a hold of it. Uh, there we go, okay. We got it out at the, at the um, back. This front here might be a little tricky. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I might have to sit up a minute. Okay, there you go okay see how they come out very easy okay but they don't go back in very easy okay so now we just got to get this uh, ball joint here to separate okay guys we got the lower ball joint to separate as you notice it's just a pin going up and when that bolt goes through it locks in and keeps that from going either way so we got that to separate but one thing we did have to do this here was hanging, I had to shove this screwdriver back in here because the step that I should have told you before then was to take a motorcycle strap, come up here and hook it on the top of your strut here, and then situate it around this knuckle in such a fashion to where it can hold it up, okay? I'm gonna let a little slack out. And we're just gonna wrap it around, hook it to itself, just like so, and then we're gonna tug up on this, okay? And we've got a hold of the knuckle, get it off of that shield so it don't bend it. And we're gonna pull our screwdriver out here. We're gonna shove our strut here out of the way. And then we're gonna pull up on this knuckle, okay? You don't wanna let this thing hang too far because you'll end up pulling your CV joint apart on the inside here. You definitely don't want to do that. So you're just going to pull this thing on up out of your way. And now you've got all the room in the world to put the new part in. So let me go get the new part and we'll get this sucker put together. All right, guys, we've got our new control arm. We've got all the room in the world here to slide it in and get these bolts started. Remember your shorter bolt goes on the front one here and your longer bolt goes on the rear. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it in and fiddle around with it a little bit till I get these started. I'm gonna try to start this uh, front one first, okay? So I'll get it started and then we'll get the back one started. Okay guys, I'm using a screwdriver to kind of get it centered up and hopefully I will be able to get this bolt to go up in here. Okay, we got the front bolt in and the nut on top and we're gonna swing the back here into place if we can. Take our screwdriver and try to See if we can get it dialed in and centered the best we can. And then we're going to uh, try to start this other bolt and we'll get that in there and then we'll tighten these down. Okay, we got the back one in place with a little bit of persuasion. 
Like I said, guys, this ain't the easiest thing in the world to do, but it is possible. Okay, now that we have those in place, we're gonna go ahead and take our 21 millimeter and our 21 millimeter wrench, and we're gonna go ahead and zip these down. Okay, now with the hard part over with, that's the most aggravating part about it is getting those two new bolts started on the bottom, okay? If you don't pull this knuckle and stuff out, you probably won't get it. Now on a lift, I have got them before, but this way here, you just don't have enough leverage to work with. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our motorcycle strap off of the knuckle. And we're gonna go ahead and try to set it in place on the bottom of this ball joint here. Right here, we wanna put the bottom right up there in place. And this can be a little tricky as well, but we can get it. So we might have to turn our ball joint just a little bit. We'll get that in there. And we'll just keep wiggling and working with it until we get this to seat in place. Okay, once you get this in the right position, you can take your bolt and from the inside here, you should be able to easily slide it all the way through. And that will lock the ball joint to the bottom of the knuckle. And then we will tighten this up. Okay, you won't be able to see this, but I'm getting ready to put this uh, sway bar link back in place here. And then put the nut on it and tighten it down with an 18 millimeter. So we're going to take our ABS wire and shove it back into our knuckle. You probably won't be able to see that either. Put the 10 millimeter headed bolt in place and we will tighten that down. Next, you want to muscle your knuckle back into your strut here. And uh, I've already got one bolt here kind of started. You may need a screwdriver or something to uh, get them started. I'll see if I can get this one going here. And get it going good enough. I'll just kind of tap them back in place. There we go. Screw, uh, tighten the nuts down here, get them started by hand, and then we'll tighten them down. Okay guys, it's about time to go ahead and hang the brakes back on here. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our little needle nose pliers, grab our stud down here. Hold this floating rotor in place a little easier. Next, we'll take our caliper bracket with the pads already in it. And we will start them by hand and then tighten them down as well. Next, we'll tighten down these caliper bolts. Next, we'll lay our caliper in place, being careful not to twist the uh, brake line. And we'll start these bolts by hand, and then we'll tighten them down with a 14 millimeter swivel socket on the air ratchet. Okay guys, that just about does it. We got the brakes back intact and everything, new parts on. That pretty much wraps it up on how to replace a lower control arm on a 2011 Nissan Murano, okay? Guys, I wanna thank you for watching the video today. Only thing we got left to do is put the tire back on it, torque it down, and we're gonna take this for a nice test drive. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And folks, I have written a fitness book and it is for sale on Amazon right now. If you would like to purchase one for yourself, there will be a link down below. Have a wonderful day and come back to see us. Bye-bye.